Hello everyone. In this lecture, I want to talk about one of the concepts in lecture two that is apparently not clear and some of you asked some questions. In particular, we want to talk about the moment of a force about a given axis. If you remember, this was the figure that I showed you. So that's figure 3.27 from the Beer Johnson book. And basically the question was, if you know the moment with respect to a point, and that's a vector, what is the meaning of the moment with respect to an axis OL in this case? And we learned that is essentially the projection of MO onto the axis OL. So apparently this concept was not very clear to some of you. I try to explain it now in this little lecture in a different way and from a different perspective. So let's forget this problem for a moment and think about a much simpler problem. And then again, this problem doesn't have to be about moments or anything. It's just about a vector. So if you have a vector in a three-dimensional space, as shown here, so vector v, vector v has three components, vx, vy, and vz. Now, a different way of looking at it is to say Vx is the projection of vector V onto x-axis. And then again, the projection onto x-axis is essentially the dot product of V dot i. And you can imagine this is essentially writing like Vx i plus Vy j plus v z k dot i and you know that the dot product of i with i is just one the dot product of j with i and k with i is zero so for that matter you end up only with vx the same holds about v y and v z and that's just, let's say, a warm-up to explain what I want to say next. So basically, you can say the x component is determined via projection onto x-axis. In other words, the projection onto x-axis is nothing but dot product with the unit vector of x-direction. Now, remember this concept, the unit vector of a specific direction, we call it director. So the unit vector of x direction is the director of x direction. You may call it i, as we usually do. In our notation and what we learned recently, this is nothing but lambda x. So we said lambda is usually our director and it could be along any axis. In this case, it's along x axis. So having said that, and then again, remember that what we just discussed about, it's about any direction. So we talked about x direction specifically, but it would be exactly the same if we talked about y direction and z direction as well. Now having said that, here is the question. If you have this vector v, what is the component of V along OL line or OL axis, if you want? So how to calculate that? That's fairly simple with what we just learned. We basically need to find the director of that line, and let's call that lambda OL. And exactly like we projected a V onto the director of X, to find the x component, so again, this is director of x to find the x component. That is director of ol to find ol component. Now, the director of ol would be a little vector here lambda ol 
it points in the same direction as OL and it has a unit length. So it's a unit vector, obviously. And that's lambda OL. Also remember, the order doesn't matter for the dot product. So you may write it like this or like this. So that's like a warm up to tell you that if you want to find the component of a vector along a given line or given axis, this is usually a projection. And that's exactly what we did previously in that lecture. So we project a vector, a moment vector, onto a line to find its component. Now a relevant question is why do we do that? Why are we interested in that? And now I'm trying to explain that. Just think about this very simple example. Say you have a point A, at point A, a force F is applied with a distance OA from point O. Now the moment with respect to O would be OA cross product F. This is the usual problem about the moment with respect to a point. Now, if you want to think of this as being a force on a door. So let's say you have a door here, and then maybe this point A is the door handle, and the force F is the force that you apply on the door handle. And then the line OL in this case would be the line where you have the hinges, basically. Okay, so the door is going to open like this with respect to OL axis. So for this problem now, maybe we want to ask ourselves, what is the moment with respect to that axis? Okay, so that moment essentially tells you how quickly you open or close the door because it's a moment with respect to that axis. That's what matters for this type of problems. And based on what we just learned, in order to calculate that, you just need to project MO onto OL axis. And then again, maybe you want to write it in a different order. It's exactly the projection that we talked about. And then again, lambda OL can be calculated by just normalizing the vector OL, and it has the unit length. If you look at this also more carefully, you can imagine that the force F that you apply, it has a component in the plane orthogonal to the door. So let's say if, if you have the door here, there is this plane that is orthogonal to the door. So the component of force F on that plane is the part of F that makes a difference. Okay, so that would be this little plane here. The vertical component of F, it will cause a moment in this other direction. Okay, so let's say around this axis. If you had an axis here, it would be around this axis. So this is not the part that is interesting for us. So basically what you need to do is to project force F into that plane. And let's maybe we call this F, I don't know, FH, like F horizontal. And remember, this is a force. So it's a vector. It has two components yet in that plane. And then maybe you call this vector, maybe vector D. Okay, so if you, if you just calculate the moment of that, it would be essentially giving you the same thing, but then again, remember, this is a scalar value, so the magnitude of that would give you essentially the magnitude of MOL. And then again, we talk about the magnitudes because you may have a plus or minus direction. But in terms of understanding the direction and what it means, that's, that's all there is. MOL is just the projection of MO onto OL direction. Now looking back at what we had, it's exactly what we said. So 
you have a force F at point A. So we don't show that door and that nice example, but it's essentially the same thing. You have a point O, force F applied on it, and then you can calculate the moment with respect to O, but also you know that if you project that force onto that plane, orthogonal to the axis, the component F1 is, is not causing the moment that you are looking for. The interesting component is the F2. And this F2 is exactly what we had here. So, so in our example, this would be F1 and F2. So exactly if we come to that picture again, you can imagine that F2 is, is not necessarily orthogonal to R2. And then again, R2 being just that distance from the hinge, from the line. And here is just the projection that we talked about. And then again, you can decompose the distance in R1 and R2. You can decompose the force into its, let's say, horizontal components and vertical components. And if you put all that together, you see that only a part of the force that we just discussed about is important. This is the part that measures the horizontal part of the force and the distance from the door hinge essentially and then again if you if you look from top on that you know that horizontal part of the force is not necessarily orthogonal to that distance so you you know that only the orthogonal part of it or perpendicular part of it part of it to the distance vector is important for the moment and then this gives you the orthogonal distance of the force and then Essentially, you can show it like this, like or that. The, the only importance being that if you assume this is a positive value, you should always also think of the magnitude of this. Because this part, I mean, in terms of direction, it gives you something parallel to lambda, but it is not exactly in the same direction as lambda. It could give you plus or minus that. This is a minor technicality. This is not too important why we do this magnitude, but it's more important that you understand what is meant by this. And then again, this is exactly the formula that we talked about, let's say conceptually, but now we have it mathematically.